of HITC Sport. Right, so the Premier League is apparently the holy grail, right? The English media would have you believe this league is the be-all and end-all of life. The pinnacle of every young footballer's career. Sure, some people trying to say that about Messi. Oh, he's never done it. Stoke on a Tuesday night. Don't think he really has to when he has five Ballon d'Ors. So let's try and dispel that myth. I'm going to take a look at one footballer from every age, stretching from 17 to 30, that actually succeeded when they quit England to move abroad. This is basically that one career decision would save them from a life of mediocrity, embarrassment, or even early retirement covered in shame, allowing them to instead flourish in another country. Anyway, right, let's have a look. 17, Jaden Sancho to Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, Man City fans must be getting ready to pull out their teeth. Sure, many of them are trying to desperately convince themselves that they don't need Jaden Sancho. He's a city reject, right? Oh uh, yeah, well, when this guy's banging in Derby Day winners at Old Trafford, how are you gonna feel then? That's Sancho's half the reason current English players are moving abroad. For about 15 years, anyone with a British passport seemed terrified to even set foot in another country. When Jonathan Woodgate was the only one flying the f***ing flag, no wonder. Christ, the only way he'd have been more of a league of disaster is if he just spent every match day taking a dump on the pitch. But. These days, having watched Sancho leave the City youth team as a 17-year-old kid, signing for Borussia Dortmund for just eight million pounds, mere pennies, and in the space of three years, he's emerged as the most sought-after young talent on the planet, scoring 20 goals a season in the Bundesliga, and now returning to Manchester as an established 80 million pounds superstar. Had he stayed at the Etihad, he'd currently be starting less than five games a season, and would have about as much chance of an England call-up as Teo f***ing Walcott. 18, Ravi Matondo to Schalke. Yeah, lads, there's not many footballers who quit the Premier League at 18 years of age. I mean, Jude Bellingham's just left Birmingham for Dortmund in a £30 million deal, but he's 17 and that is the championship. But Christ above, Birmingham decided to retire the number 22 jersey? For what? For f goals? Lad, you either retire a shirt for a club legend who spent 20 years at your club, or, and sorry to get bleak with this, he's just after dying. Bellingham has done neither of these things. He's just used you as a stepping stone to further his career. If anything, he's insulted your club. Christ above, it's like being left at the altar, and then the next day, deciding to get a tattoo of your ex-wife. A permanent reminder of sheer humiliation etched on your goddamn chest. Anyway, I'm gonna go for Rabbi Matondo here, who, like Sancho, decided to leave the Etihad bench for Germany. Actually, he, he wasn't even on the bench. Pep Guardiola probably didn't have a clue who he was. Well, he's a scout swinger who plays for Wales and has since ripped up the Bundesliga. Not to the same extent Sancho has, but he's still been a bright spark for Schalke and is currently worth about £25 million and also being linked with Man United. He's like the beat like Sancho, but had he stayed at City, he'd probably be on loan at Blackburn Rovers. Forever forgotten like Sean Ray Phillips' son. Yes, lads, Sean Ray Phillips is an 18-year-old son. He looks barely old enough to have even kissed a girl. 19, Paul Pogba to Juventus. Okay, let's be honest. Paul Pogba was on the right track when he quit Man United. United in 2012, having clearly been disgusted at a lack of game time. To be fair, Fergie picking a right back out of him in the field is such an insult, he might as well have spat in Pogba's face. Leaving his seat in the old Trafford Coat closet 18 months before the David Moyes reign of terror, it looked like a genius move. Off he goes to play every week in the heart of Juventus in the field, hoover up four consecutive league titles, start a Champions League final against Barcelona, and break into France's starting 11 for the goddamn World Cup, where he'd win the Golden Boy Award. It's just that. Uh, it's a, it's a bit like breaking up with your head wrecking girlfriend. Only th to then return to her four years later. No, Pogba, if you just stayed where you were, you'd have won four more league titles, be playing with Ronaldo every week, and as a world champion, would probably be seen as the greatest number eight on the planet. He really should have stayed where he was. 20, Jeff Rennet Adelaide to Leon. Yeah, here's one that slipped through the cracks at Arsenal. Lads, Jeff Rennet Adelaide is being talked up in the media uh, for a good reason. He's currently a 22 year old, 25 million pound midfielder, playing every week for a big club like Leon. Is he even being talked up for a senior international cap for France. While at Arsenal, he was just forgotten. He just spent most of his time either stuffed in the other 21s or being picked for an FA Cup game against Sutton. You know, the, the team with the goalie who spent the game eating pies on the bench. Adelaide, a bit like Lasana Diarra in 2007, grew tired of being overlooked and so yeah, got himself a move away to lowly angers in 2018. Lads, at the time, it might have looked like a complete and utter failure. Half his childhood friends were probably laughing in his face. But now, he's one of the top midfielders in France. I I'm pretty sure he's happy he made the move. He won Jared Piquet to Barcelona. Okay, don't get me wrong. Serge Gnabry nearly made this list. Quitting the Arsenal bench at the age of 21, and three years later, He's scoring four goals at Tottenham's new stadium. Back in 2015, he couldn't dislodge James McLean or Callum McManaman from the goddamn West Brom team. Now he has 13 goals and 13 German caps, and proving himself to be Iron Robin's perfect replacement at Bayern Munich. But still, he doesn't keep out Jared Piquet, who made one of the greatest decisions in world football. Sure, quitting the Champions of Europe just one week after lifting the Champions League with Man United, it was a slight gamble. But had he stayed in England, this guy, a ball-playing defender way before his time in English football, he would have just spent the next five years of his life dumped on on the bench before maybe striking up a partnership with Phil Jones in 2012. And as for marrying pop stars, if you're seen as a bang average Premier League substitute, 
As far as pop stars go, yeah, maybe a little mix member might take pity on you, but that's about it. Since leaving England in 2008, over 500 times for his boyhood Barcelona, being capped over 100 times, won 32 pieces of silverware, including the World Cup and three Champions Leagues. He couldn't get past either the Manu Medic or Rio Ferdinand, and now he's gone on to win more medals than the two of them combined. 22, Kevin De Bruyne Wolfsburg. I'm sorry, this is one of the greatest career moves in history. Listen, when Kevin De Bruyne was forced to abandon his Premier League dream at Chelsea back in January 2014, it must have seemed like a failure. But no, recently I had people in my comments comparing this guy with Zidane. Well, back at Stamford Bridge, he was only given three goddamn games. Christ above, Mourinho played Steve Sidwell more than that. Relocating to lowly Europa League Wolfsburg, stopped halfway down the back of the Bundesliga couch. It must have been quite embarrassing. It was like taking five steps back, but no, it was the best thing he could have ever done. Away from the toxic nature of Chelsea's reserves, a club where they view youngsters as a goddamn afterthought. Sure, he probably had dreams of emulating Frank Lampard at Chelsea. And so to be told he wasn't even better than Marco van Ginkel, it must have felt like being slapped in the nutsack. But away from Stamford Bridge, he thrived in Germany, shone for Belgium at the World Cup, and within 18 months was earning a 55 million pound move back to England with Man City, and now five years later, he's been compared with Zidane. 23, Iron Robin to Real Madrid. Okay, I'm not sure what Chelsea were thinking when they tossed Iron Robin out the door in the summer of 2007. This guy was about to become one of the most lethal wingers on the planet, but for him, great decisions to leave Stamford Bridge in August 2007. Sure, he only lasted two seasons at Real Madrid, but still got his hands on a Liga title medal, then got his move to Bayern Munich, where he's become a club legend. At Chelsea, where they apparently rated Flora Maluda higher, he just spent his career in and out of the team, but in Germany, over 300 games, nearly 150 goals, 8 league titles, 5 Pokal Cups, 5 Super Cups, a Champions League and UEFA Super Cup. Not bad. 24, Gareth Bale to Real Madrid. Okay, I could have easily chosen Cristiano Ronaldo for this one. But let's be honest, a player that good, he would have probably been alright without the move to Spain. Probably still have ended up with five Ballon d'Ors. Gareth Bale though, back in 2013, had just finished fifth in the league with Spurs. Wrapping up a world record £85 million move to Real Madrid, it bought him a legacy he had no divine right to ever have. A talented player, sure, but he'd only ever had one 20 goal season in his life. Four years earlier, he was seen as a cursed left back shoved on the Spurs bench. Had he gone to Man United in 2013 instead, he'd have gone on to have a career on par with Ashley Young. Actually, even worse, he'd have gone to his grave without a single league winner's medal. An FA Cup, EFL Cup, and Europa League. That would be his legacy. Instead, he's won two La Liga titles, four Champions Leagues, scoring a bicycle kick in the final, playing alongside one of the best footballers to ever live, three Club World Cups, over 100 goals for the biggest club on the planet, playing in sunny Spain, earning 500 grand a week. What a career move. 25, Diego Forlan to Villarreal. Yeah, here's another move which saved the guy's career. Christ, can you imagine if Diego Forlan had stayed at Old Trafford? Don't get it wrong, this guy was a Premier League joke. Man United's fourth choice striker. An unadulterated flop with just 10 league goals in 60 games. Had he stayed in England, he'd have spent the prime years of his career picking his belly button on the goddamn bench. Signing for Villarreal, August 2004, he immediately battered home 25 goals in his first season, winning the European Golden Boot, and to prove that was no fluke, he won it again in 2009, smashing home 32 for Atletico Madrid. Six years, six years after we outscored by Danny Murphy, Sean Amiobi and Kyle Court. He was now winning the 2010 World Cup Golden Ball. Forlan has retired as one of the greatest players of his generation. And he stayed in England, nobody would remember who the f*** he was. 26, Javier Mascherano to Barcelona. Alright, this was a critical move. Javier Mascherano was 26 years of age in 2010. If he'd missed the boat that summer, he could very realistically have spent the rest of his career stuck in Liverpool's midfield. Meaning he'd have gone to his grave with just one League Cup winner's medal to his name. And even then they only scraped on penalties against Cardiff City. That's like being proud of beating up a toddler. Instead, by moving to Barcelona, he lifted five league titles, five Copa del Reyes, two Champions Leagues, two Club World Cups. Sure, he'd probably have got to play in his preferred midfield position every week, rather than marshalling a back four in Spain, but he'd have a CV less impressive than Ryan Bertrand's. 27, Odi Nagalo to Chung Chun Yatai. Okay, lads, I could easily pick Luis Suarez for the same reasons as Mascherano, choosing to swallow a bunch of medals in Barcelona rather than being stuck in a dead-end Liverpool job. But you know what? No. Instead, set forward Odi Nagalo. This fella's just had the most undeserved career progression the last three years of his life. I'm sorry, but rewind back to the 16-17 season with Watford. He scored one goal in 18 games, looked so far out of his depth with his confidence stuffed down the sink. Since quitting England and stepping into the piss-easy Chinese Super League, not only has he become a goal-scoring superstar, he was being paid over £200,000 a week. By rights, he should have been stuck on the bench at Bristol City. And somehow, after looking good against a bunch of Chinese plumbers, he's finally wound back in England with his boy club Man United. Yeah, I think that would have happened had he continued to embarrass himself on a weekly base at Vicarage Road. 28, Aaron Ramsey to Juventus. Lads, what a career move. Like Gareth Bale, Aaron Ramsey was just 
a good player from Wales. The ceiling for his career could very well have been two decades of failing to win a title at Arsenal. This guy could have just been this generation's Ray Parler, spending a lifetime in North London before winding down with Middlesbrough and Hull. And then within 15 years, we all forget who he is. But no, instead, this guy is flying the flag for Wales in Serie A. He's essentially taking Pogba's job. What he should be doing with his career. Hoovering up £400,000 a week, playing with Ronaldo every week, winning an almost guaranteed league title every year. The first league winner's medal of his career, by the way. Let's not forget, before this move, the only medal to show for his 14 seasons of football were just two from the FA Cup. 29 Patrick Vieira to Juventus. Yeah, and now the midfielder swapping Arsenal for Juventus. Listen lads, Patrick Vieira got out of Highbury at exactly the right moment. It's telling that his last ever kick of the ball in an Arsenal shirt was to win the FA Cup in May 2005, the club's last piece of silverware for nearly a goddamn decade. Off he went to Juventus to win the league, although admittedly that was rescinded because of cheating, but it doesn't matter because he just went and won four in a row at Inter Milan instead. Had he stayed in North London? Sure, he'd have got to play in the Emirates, but the era of Nicholas Benner, Danielson, Maron Shamak, nobody wants to stick around for that. 30 Graziano Pelle to Shandong Luneng. Yeah, let's say Graziano Pelle when he swapped Southampton for Shandong Luneng in 2016. Sure, it almost single-handedly cancelled his international career for Italy, but let's be honest, the man was slowing down in the Premier League and would most likely have been binned back on the Serie A sidewalk. Instead, this guy is one of the best paid players on the planet, earning £34 million over the course of two and a half years. Which one of you would turn that offer down? £260,000 a week for a man of very limited talents. Anyway, that's it the video, lads. Let me know in the comments section below. What players do you think have prospered since quitting England? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.